What's up everybody? My name is Jacob Collier and I'm here behind the scenes with Rolling Stone UK for the cover shoot. One of the first things I was drawn to as a musician was the concept of improvisation. So coming up with something on the spot or riffing on something on the spot. And the crazy thing is how much of my life I spend improvising anyway. Like I'm improvising right now. I'm talking to you and I'm making it up as I go along. But I have a kind of sense of what I'm talking about. I think music at its best can feel like that. You have like a general semblance of the thing, but then you just kind of mess about and so like see what feels good. Um, for me on stage, improvisation is very important. Every show I try to do something I've never ever done before. And last year, I did a hundred shows all over the world and at every show I played a song on the piano that I'd never performed before. It's like a fresh experience. Yeah, one of the most important things as a musician but also as a person is to learn to kind of roll with the chaos of life. Life is very chaotic and strange. And so the experience of, of the input of the world coming in and then the output of your energy going out, that can be a very strange thing if the world is a strange place, which it is. But it can also be a very exciting thing when you embrace that chaos is actually fine and it's natural. The feeling is unlike any other in the whole wide world. I began to experiment a while ago with just standing on the stage with the whole audience and getting them to start singing different parts. So I'd have one note here, one note here, one note in the middle. So it's normally three parts. And I move the notes up and down with my, with my arms and people follow the notes and sing along. And it's, it's almost like a spiritual experience. You know, it feels like something that brings everybody together. Um, something that feels very electric in the room. And it kind of happened by accident. I didn't really plan it. I just began to experiment with it and it ended up blowing my mind. And so I haven't stopped doing it and it's still blowing my mind right now. Stevie Wonder was my original childhood hero and I used to watch him and listen to him play all the instruments on his albums. And it gave me such hope and such power and uh, spurred me on to thinking that I could do things the way I wanted to do them. I think the purest form of inspiration I've ever come across is the kind that makes you want to be more like yourself. Not more like the inspirer, but more like you. And I used to listen to people like Stevie Wonder sing and rather than thinking I want to sing just like Stevie, I thought I want to sing just like Jacob. And that's how I know it was a real inspiration. Besides Stevie Wonder, I, I'm very inspired by, by people's voices, the sound of people's voices. Whether they're talking or singing or shouting or screaming or crying or whatever, I just think there's something extremely visceral and immediate about the sound of a voice. And in my increasing musical adventures and travels, I, I'm just very, very obsessed with what happens when voices come together. And I also love stretching my own voice as far as it can possibly go in all directions to see like what kind of forms it can take, what kind of shapes it can take. And in the last few years, I've collaborated with musicians from all over the world, from, um, from Mali to Morocco to Portugal to all over the States and Japan and Korea. Everybody has a voice. Everybody is therefore a musician. And I think, yeah, one of the things I'm most passionate about is just getting people's voices to come out and feeling those in, in, in my heart. I would like to live in a world where everybody feels like it's okay and good and important to be who they are, the person that they are. I think that's um, in some ways a world that we're increasingly living in, which I really am excited about. I'd love to live in a world at all, which I think will take some environmental awareness and some change um, across the board. I think that when I think about success as a person, I think about sustainability. Can I sustain my energy? Can I sustain the planet? Can I sustain my ideas? And um, can I sustain my, my body and my mind? And, I think that in the world right now, there's a sort of mass awakening as to what that means for people, what that means for communities, for natural environments, for products, for, um, for all of our natural spaces. And I think that the more that we live in those parts of our lives, the better we will all feel. I'm, a quite, I'm quite a chaotic and colorful person in many ways. Uh, and so I'm often drawn to patterns that have lots of different colors and patterns and I think things going on within them. Um, I also just like comfortable clothes and I grew up wearing pajamas because that's what you do as a kid. And I saw no reason to stop wearing pajama-like materials on stage, for example. So on stage I wear really baggy trousers and I, I, I love loud, I love colorful. Um, I also love really subtle patterns that have sort of hidden textures and, and, and different, uh, different elements within them. And, yeah, I don't think too much about my fashion. I, I just, I wear what I'm drawn to at that moment, and that feels like it's, it's good enough for me.